when we're moving, we're thinking better, we're feeling better, and frankly, we're doing better overall. Because we are, we're meant to move. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lost Art of Parenting podcast. We're here to help educate, entertain, and encourage you in all things parenting. We want to help you understand what you are doing and why, so that you can actually increase the odds of raising a child who's prepared for what life while also actually enjoying the parenting process along the way way. My name is Jesse Mayer. I will be your host, but we cannot do the lost art of parenting without the parenting guru and master herself, (laughs) Miss Kim Cross. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for that intro. You're so welcome. I'm excited that we're going to be talking about two of my favorite things today, (laughs) which is diet and exercise. (laughs) Well, let me reframe that for you. Okay. We are not going to say diet because it has a negative connotation. Not so everybody we're loves talk about the word food. diet. You, I just like talking. I my diet is I eat everything. So. There you go. But you like food. So I like food. I we're going to talk about food. Okay. Okay. And then exercise has typically a bad connotation too, right? Gym rat bros in the getting <laughs> swole in the gym, <laughs> which maybe is not what you want your four year old to do. So <laughs> probably not. <laughs> we redefine that one as physical activity. Physical activity. Doesn't okay. that sound like more fun? That food does sound and more physical? like f- more fun and something that a child would actually do. But as a whole, it's just a better way to look at those things. I think. I mean, it is. I think you're right. The culture has put a very distinct connotation on the words diet and exercise and not all of them good or healthy mindsets to be in. So Correct. food Correct. and activity. And we're talking about it today for obviously as a parenting coach, I'm focused on kids, but parents need to do the same thing and teach mm. those good habits to their kids. So I Absolutely. thought we'd start with a funny story. Okay. So I grew up in a household where Food and physical activity were highly encouraged and they were highly valued. And my dad had a huge background in all of that. Mm. So um, I had some really good, I guess, life starts to both. But funny, embarrassing story. Halloween came around, of course, once a year. And as we all know, Halloween's fun, right? Costumes and parties and treats and candy and all that stuff. Yeah, not so much at my house. So (laughs) we had the costumes, we had the parties, but... We had the the neighborhood's longest, scariest driveway. Okay. And so you'd think, okay, long, scary driveway. There's got to be good stuff at Kim's house. No. My dad was a dentist, so at the end of that driveway, they didn't get candy bars. They got a toothbrush. Oh, yay. <laughs> I was so popular the day after Halloween. <laughs> e so much. You're like, I don't know who lives down there. That's weird. Oh, I have no, I, no clue. It was so embarrassing and funny, but not so great as a kid. But I look back and I really do appreciate the foundation that I got Mm. and the healthy habits I was taught as a young kid. I mean, we had treats and candy now and then. It's not like, you know, zero, but I really appreciate it because they've stayed with me my whole life. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's dive into um, our topic then. So we want to talk about food first, right? What is our, what should our relationship with food be? What, what should we, um, you know, me as a future, hopefully parent and current parents, what should we be looking at food wise for our families? I would assume a lot of these are going to apply to the parents as well, because you're not typically only feeding the child and then eating something different. So. <laughs> well, that, that does happen. That but. does happen, but not <laughs> as often as you're sharing the same meal. Right, right. So first of all, food is a way for families to communicate and have fun time together. So it should be pleasant around the dinner table. Mm. It's more focused really on each other than the food, but the food is important. So we are what we eat, particularly for little kids who are developing and growing and their brain is developing. I mean, it's way more important than I think people give it credit. Mm. So quality food leads to quality life. Um, That's one of the components of a quality life, I should say. And if we're giving our kids processed food and junk and a lot of sugar, you're going to see the aftermath of that. So I tell parents, I know your time is valuable. I know you're busy. 
But take the time to cook healthy food. Take the time to eat it. Take the time to enjoy it. Don't have it be be a fast-paced, fast food type environment revolving around food. Okay, it's probably not going to be as healthy. It's not going to be as fun. And then um, don't fall into the trap that our culture has fallen into, which is quick and easy, processed, um, which is basically junk food. It's full of neurotoxins. It's full of things that do impact kids' behavior. Um, It does impact their health. It does impact their immune system, and it impacts how their brain works. It's not. It's not um, a light topic, is what I'm trying to get to. I know it's um, maybe common sense for some people, but for other people, they're shocked to learn about how much food impacts brain, learning, overall health, energy, everything. The other thing I like to tell people is think of your grocery store as a pharmacy. When you walk in, you're buying things that are either over the counter, meaning supplements, vitamins, good for you, or they might be prescription type stuff or lead to prescriptions right? because they're not good for you. So um, I call it eat to live, not live to eat, Mm. right? So make decisions. So as kids were taught, well, you better think before you speak. And I tell parents, think before you eat, read labels, make sure what you're serving is good stuff. And we'll talk about what, what defines good here in a second. Well, and I think it's really important. Um, you know, I, as a bachelor currently am cooking for one, which is almost worse than cooking for a family in some ways, because trying to eat healthy is so expensive because you either need to eat the same meal all week to justify the cost of it, or you have to be very selective in figuring out how to reuse the same elements in multiple things. Otherwise you're buying $400 in food for one person right. to make five meals. Right. And so I think similarly, if you want to make gains in making healthy choices, you have to do what I do, which was meal prep. If you don't have time throughout the week to make healthy options, you need to be meal prepping where you take Sunday after work. That's what I do. I finish up at the church. I go home, I take a nap, pastor nap, and then, uh, I go and shop and do my meal prep. And so if you're worried about, well, it's just a time commitment that I can't justify cooking healthily every week, you need to do meal prep. And that does add some stuff. It does take away from your weekend, but it is going to save you in the long run because then it's super easy, right? (laughs) And I think the, the psychology that you've talked about of how you view food and how you interact with it is huge. One of my favorite apps that really started pushing me towards eating better is called Noom and OOM. My trainer recommended it. And it, it is not just an app that talks about here's what you should eat. It's, it goes through a process of your relationship psychologically with food and how you view it. Yeah. Yeah. And what, why you might turn to certain foods at certain points in your life or times of your life and understanding and growing that relationship into something healthy, which then may help you make better choices or better things because it there's everybody's body's different. That's why, you know, you're going to have some recommendations on certain foods that you should eat, but ultimately the reason that every diet fad comes in and fades away is because not everybody's body type works with every single diet, right? Or it's not sustainable. Right. So everyone wants to sell you on a diet that works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's not how our (laughs) bodies work. Our bodies are unique and there are definitely better options as a whole for most people, but not everyone can do the paleo diet or not everyone could do Atkins and not everyone can sustain doing blah, 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 blah. Right. And so following good ideas and good guidelines is great, but then I, I ideally locking into the thing that makes your body respond the best psychologically and physically is yeah. what you really need. Right? Yeah. And we also know that generally overall certain foods are better to eat than others, Yes, you know? So sure. like the Mediterranean diet comes out as the number one healthiest diet for the fourth year in the row in the U S you know, and there that's based on research. That's based on statistics. That's based on fact. So does it fit everybody? No, but is it a good general principle? Absolutely. The principles of it are, right. are well accepted as right. being healthy for most people. And if you can kind of get into some general categories such as healthy fats. So some the, the fad when I was growing up was no fat or low fat diet. Well, it turned out to be a big mistake. Right. So Fats are very good, particularly for your brain, which is not only your processing center, but it's part of your immune system, as is your gut. So omega-3s, 
really good for you. So avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, all good, right? Mm -hmm. Omega-6s, think of those as neurotoxins. Those are your vegetable oils. Not so good, okay? So if you can read labels and just start with one category in your kitchen and get rid of the bad oils and bring in the good, that's a great start, right? Right? Naturally colorful foods. We don't, we all know that artificial color is not good. So if you've got lots of veggies, lots of fruits, beans, nuts, um, you know, sweet potatoes, greens, berries, they have natural color. That means they're loaded with nutrients. That's a good thing, mm. right? Um, light on red meat doesn't mean you can't eat it, but go a little lighter on that and try to go with more fish and poultry and nuts is good. Um, some dairy's okay, but whole fat dairy, probably not so great. And then whole grains. Um, I was taught to stay away from white food, white rice, white bread, white potatoes. Now, does that mean you should cut it out completely? No, but try to focus on the whole grains. So there are general principles that are healthier and work better for just about everybody. And one of those is use a lot of spices and herbs as opposed to a lot of salt. So you can tweak it, but those are kind of the main principles that are going to lead you in a, in a better uh, direction for your overall health. So we've talked about the food <laughs> side, which is a large portion of it, but then there's also the activity. It's like you can eat as healthy as you want, but if you're not, if you're not burning X amount of calories to counteract what you're eating, ultimately you're going to be at a loss as far as trying to maintain a healthy weight. Correct. Yeah. And you know, we're made to move. If you look at the physiology of the human body, it is meant to move. And mm. as a species, we used to move a lot more than some of our sedentary desk jobs, uh, you know, preclude us from exercise and moving as much as we want now. But there's so many benefits to that physical activity. So it controls your weight or helps control that because you're moving, you're burning calories, as you just said. Um, moving helps combat a lot of health conditions, diseases, um, helps keep our good cholesterol high and our bad cholesterol low, the HDA, HDL versus LDL. Mm. It prevents and manages um, strokes and blood pressure and type 2 diabetes and anxiety and all kinds of things. So movement not just is a weight control, but it also helps with your, your overall health. The other thing we know is that movement in, improves our mood and it boosts our energy. So sometimes when we're really tired, I remember as an athlete, I would be so tired and think, ugh, last thing I want to do is work out. Well, then I would kind of push myself to work out and guess what? It increased my energy level. So sometimes it can, you know, we have to push through that and do that anyways. And then it gives you energy throughout the day. It also helps with our sleep. I don't know about you, but if I do a lot of physical uh, activity during the day, I typically sleep better at night. Mm -hmm. And the big one for me for kids is they need that outlet, right? Um, but it also helps oxygenate their brain, which gets them to be thinking better. That happens for all of us, but particularly for kids. If they're sitting all day in school, they need to move. So when I was a kid and they would have us go out and run laps or have recess, they were actually trying to get us to think better, not just burn energy. <laughs> a little both. A little bit of both? <laughs> a little okay, bit of okay. both. Um, and I also do the use it or lose it as we age, right? We need to stay active. We need to keep our strength up. Um, and I don't care how old or how young you are. That's, that's important. And I think um, when we're moving, we're thinking better, we're feeling better, and frankly, we're doing better overall because we are we're meant to move so i mean i think the biggest thing we need to talk about is where what should parents be doing in order to help go through this process so um my biggest recommendation because and i i speak into this not as a parent but just as someone who has worked on diet and nutrition over the years i'm not necessarily at my healthiest form right now but every time i've really pursued that and my trainer and the various people i've worked with in at physical activity and food is not to try to make a radical change on a new year's day and start doing all the things Do a right yeah. right it's you you had talked about when we were talking about food okay if you're going to take a step let's just get rid of all the bad oils mm -hmm in the house, right? And so would you recommend that for basically everything is, is, is you're making these choice, these changes, and we're going to talk about what other changes or how they can find out more changes that they could work on 
do not try to implement them all in one keystroke where you throw all the food out in one day and yeah. and say, hey, family, we're now doing this thing and now everybody get in line. Is that That's not sustainable, it's, right? It's not. So, you know, changing out your oils, that's usually step one for me, <clears throat> especially um, because we cook with it, we use it all the time and it's a big... It gets infused into everything. Yeah, and it, it it's it's part of your everyday diet. Number two, I have people go through their pantry and read the labels. Mm. Get rid of the stuff with corn syrup. Get rid of the stuff that has you know preservatives, artificial colors, things like that. And replace, there's options out there. Now replace it with something different. Maybe the next step you take is get rid of a lot of high sugar pasta type things, those white foods, and replace them with cauliflower noodles, right? And there's other options. Just go step by step in in making your changes because that's more sustainable than just flipping everything. And especially because, you know, things are expensive these days. So throwing out food, even though it may not be optimal for you, is not the way to do it. But if you, as you start going, okay. Categories. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, okay, we're going to, we know what we need to buy for these things for now, but then, okay, well, maybe I'll start I've started switching over to more organic stuff just because I would like to eat a little bit cleaner, better, cleaner, cleaner, right? But mm-hmm. I didn't go, okay, well, I'm not buying anything unorganic at all. I'm going, okay, I'm going to start with my meats and, you know, as I kind of get used to that and as my financial situation kind of adjusts, then, okay, then now I can do this and things like that. It's right. never, it's never good. It's not, it's the same thing with working out. You don't just go, okay, I am now fully invested in going to the gym every single day and you've not trained your body to do that when my trainer first took over my training he said okay i'm meeting with you once a week but the rest of the time you're going to be responsible for your workouts but before you even start working out for the next three weeks all i want you to do is get up at the time you're planning on working out or you get know, in the habit get in the habit and just get <clears throat> up drink some coffee sit and be awake and train your body to be awake. Because if you say, oh, I'm going to get up and work out, but your body's not used to getting up early, the likelihood of you reaching over and hitting that snooze alarm is significantly <laughs> higher than if you've trained your body to just be awake Yeah, and then go into it. And you've touched on something, Jesse, where the other thing I tell people is what you buy in the grocery store and then what you have available in your house is what you're going to turn to. Mm, yes. So if you have the junk in your house, what are you going to turn to when you're hungry and stressed? Right. The junk. If the junk isn't there, your options change. Right. So you have apples, you have berries, you Grapes have yogurt, you have things. all these other healthy options. And if you're hungry, that's what you have. That's what you'll turn to. And those become habits. And mm. guess what? Every time I do this with clients, they tell me, boy, I feel better. And when I now have a body that's that's used to these new habits and these healthier foods, when I eat the junk, it hits me like a freight train. Yeah, you feel it. I don't feel good. And now that's a, a natural way to help you avoid it. Yes. So it is a process. Start with a category. And I know this is a parenting podcast, so we got to talk about the kids. If you do this for your kids, you're giving them a huge gift. They will learn to eat healthy. My kids grew up with having a garden. Now, you, maybe you don't have to have a garden, but at least have healthy options so that it becomes a habit, right. right? And it becomes habits that are lifelong. The other thing I tell parents is make sure your kids are moving and break the sugar addiction. We have kids out there that are addicted to sugar that is way out of control. Absolutely. And then kids with ADD, I do a whole podcast about that, and I work a lot in my ministry um, with kids with ADD, ADHD. Those kids are highly sensitive to sugars and processed foods and the, the omega-6s, the bad oils. So make appointment with me. I can help you transition from poor diet, bad food, to good diet, good food. And everybody feels better and behaves better. Yeah, I would just recommend as a whole, if you are wanting to get your kids more healthy in their eating habits or your family as a whole, or more active, or break the sugar addiction, or if you have a kid with ADD or ADHD, make an appointment with Kim and spend some time with her making a very um, serious plan about how to go through it. We can't cover every single person's things on this podcast. (laughs) You'd be listening to us for hours and hours and hours, and we still wouldn't cover everything. So you need to make an appointment with Kim and sit down and, and get a customized plan for what your family and your children need. So I would encourage you to go to rethinkparenting.com, make an appointment with her. She has her uh, ability to schedule an appointment with her on there and just reach out to her because she's going to be the one that can really help you walk through this. Don't do it alone. Um, We've given you some basic tips to start with, but 
really revamping this whole situation of how you view food, interact with food, how you interact with physical activity and how all of this comes together is a much longer conversation than we can fill in 20 minutes. And it'll impact you and your kids for the rest of your lives Absolutely. and the quality of your life. Yeah. So make a appointment with Kim at rethinkparenting.com. And until next time, this has been the Lost Art of Parenting podcast. Thank you.